I have generated over $900,000 in the last 12 months using this Shopify strategy that literally nobody is talking about. In today's video, I'll be showing you exactly what it is, how I've implemented it into my business and how you can start and do the same with your Shopify business to add an extra level of revenue, extra level of profit and to overall grow your business in a very positive way. Now this all started when I had a call with a brand new student of mine earlier this week and we essentially started off broke down his business and we were able to take a look at where his traffic's coming from, what percentage of traffic and revenues coming from Google, Facebook and things like that. And instantly I identified that he doesn't have email marketing set up other than a simple abandoned cart flow. He had nothing else in place and he even checked and only 1% of his revenue was attributed to email. Whereas if we quickly jump over to my Clavio account, you can see November 1st to October 31st, the last 12 months, I have had over $900,000 of revenue from email marketing alone, which equates to around 25% of total revenue just from email. I'm gonna be showing you today exactly how I structure email campaigns, who I send email campaigns to, I'll be showing you the flows I use and essentially really stress the point that you must have email marketing set up in place because without it, you really are missing out. You're leaving money on the table and it truly is something you need within your business if you want your brand to grow long term. Now, like I said, I've been through this with a student of mine. I've shown him exactly every single flow I've used, every single campaign type I've been using, good ways to send campaigns, good audiences, or should I say email lists to send your campaigns to when to send campaigns, literally I've given him my exact email strategy so he can go on and generate a ton of extra revenue for his business. Now, as it is Q4, I'm still taking on a couple more students for my one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So if you wanna work one-on-one -on -one and closely with me, I can help scale your business. You can ask me absolutely anything you want. Obviously, most of my content is on Google Ads, but as many of you may know, I spend more on meta ads as it's much easier to scale. And you can see here in this video as well, I've generated a ton of extra revenue from email marketing in the last 12 months as well. So anything you need help with, I'm sure I can help. And if you are interested in working with me, just drop me a message on Instagram. Now truly is the best time to take action. We're a couple of weeks away from Black Friday. So let's get a few things in place ready for Black Friday. Now, jumping into this, like I said, we've already covered the results here. And uh, if we quickly go back over to Clavio, you can actually see, uh, let me just move that out of the way. Um, if we split down the results, you can see 916K in the last year, um, 204,000 of that coming from campaigns and 711,000 coming from flows. Now, if you really have no experience, I'll quickly just sort of um, explain the difference between campaigns and flows. Campaigns are what some people might call newsletters and perhaps what you're familiar with. Any sort of email campaign that you perhaps receive from uh, a brand you're subscribed to or a customer or for example when Gymshark send out uh, their Black Friday emails that is what is called an email campaign that they are sort of one-off emails you craft and then send to a specific list of people whereas flows are completely different they're fully automated for example you'll have um, hopefully once you get this all set up correctly you will have an abandoned cart flow so when someone goes to your website, when they place or when they go to checkout and don't place an order, they will then be entered into your abandoned cart flow, meaning over the next few days, they'll receive a series of emails enticing them and trying to get them to basically come back to your website and finish off placing their order. Now, abandoned cart flows is just the surface. There are many other flows you can use. I'll be showing you them in today's video. And there is an email flow that does 10 times better than abandoned cart flows. So make sure you stick around for that as well. Okay, so we have just jumped over to the flow tab here on Clavio. Now, I'm not gonna be able to break down every single flow in exactly how you structure it in this video. Um, like I said in previous videos, I have and work with an email marketing expert who has essentially structured this for me um, about a year ago and you'll be able to see in a second how well it's doing and that's why I'm then able to share my setup and structure with my students um, essentially passing down the knowledge that I've received from an expert to my students who can implement this into their own business and really take advantage of the power of email marketing because if we just quickly switch here this is on the last seven day view if we just go to last 30 days you'll be able to see here which uh, flows we've got active you can see six different flows some businesses might have less some might have even more 
often if you've got a vast catalogue and many different sort of uh, demographics, countries, geolocations, anything like that, you might have perhaps different flows for different countries uh, due to different languages and things like that. This is just an English speaking business based in the United States. So we have six flows and if I quickly run through them here and then I'll show you essentially where these flows are going to be set up, who they're going to be sent to and essentially their purpose within the customer journey. Okay, now the first one is going to be the one I was referring to a minute ago. The most powerful one is going to be the pop up slash welcome series flow. This is essentially the email people receive when they sign up to your email list on your website. However, a lot of people do this very incorrectly. If I quickly jump over to my notes document here, um, I believe I've got the examples here. Great example here of what to do and what not to do. This essentially all starts with an email pop-up when someone visits your website. It's not something they're gonna instantly see. My pop-up is on a 10 second delay. So at least that way you whittle out the people that are literally bounce within a couple of seconds. You're not going to ever really want their email addresses. So these sort of pop ups are going to appear. It, my recommendation would be after 10 to 15 seconds of someone being on your website. Now, now a very poor example is going to be this one here. And I'm sure, you know, once you see this one here, essentially what is wrong with it? There's absolutely no offer here. There's absolutely no reason why someone would give you their name and your email and their email address because there's nothing exciting going on. It simply says subscribe, sign up to get the latest news and updates and special offers. Nobody cares about that, especially people who have never heard of your business before. Why would they give you your, their name and their email address for absolutely nothing in return? And this is a common mistake I see on so many people who have tried to implement email marketing they just go with a basic pop-up that perhaps is automatically generated by their email marketing software and they make no changes to it and they wonder why their take rate is less than 1% and it simply doesn't convert well at all. So what you are going to want to do is make an enticing pop-up, give people a reason to give you their email address and essentially give them a good offer and something in return because they're not going to do it for nothing trust me so this is a great example this is just an example i found on shopify of a very nicely laid out pop-up the only thing this is missing is obviously the box where you would enter your email address so if i were to make one very similar to this the colors are great the text is bold a very promising offer of 20 percent which is a very nice discount a very generous discount and all i would then do here is make a sec you know, second box where the customer would enter their email. Once they hit submit, they would then receive their 20% discount code. So comparing this with this, the design, first of all, is obviously 10 times better. And you are, with this one, you're giving them a very good offer. And like I keep saying, a reason for them to give you that email address. And people really don't understand and in fact underestimate how powerful a big email list can be for your business in the long term. Being able to market to people essentially for free through email really is incredibly powerful because the only real cost involved in this is your Clavio monthly subscription. When you send out a massive email campaign, you're not having to pay for every email you send. It's not like you're paying, again, marketing budget or ad spend to acquire a new customer. Once you have the email there, you can market to it through emails essentially for free. So I can't stress enough that it really is incredibly important. Anyway, if we jump back over to the flows view here, um, essentially, like I said, the first one here, you can see last 30 days, $23,000 worth of extra revenue. This again, if I just move, uh, let's just quickly shrink this down here. This column is incredibly useful as well because it will essentially tell you the revenue per recipient. Now, what this means is for every email that is sent within this email flow, how much money on average is that generating you? So this welcome flow here, for every email that's sent out to a recipient, I basically get $4.38 back, which is just incredibly, it's just insane. So it just really truly shows you how powerful this is. And like I said at the start, comparing this to the flow below it, which is the abandoned cart flow, you can see it's well over 7x in terms of performance compared to the abandoned cart flow. So you definitely want this, whether you're getting 20 visitors to your website a day, whether you're getting 10,000 visitors to your website, this is the most important one that you need. People think the most important one's abandoned cart or perhaps a customer thank you. It really isn't. You really want to focus on 
the welcome series. And if you do want a deeper dive into how this is exactly structured, please drop me a message on Instagram. Now we've already covered the abandoned cart flow, very self-explanatory, three or four emails set over a couple of days to bring people back to your website. Another one here, again, very powerful, is gonna be the browse abandonment flow. What this essentially is, is when a user comes onto your website and has perhaps already ordered from you or perhaps in the past is somehow giving you their email address, whether it's through abandoned cart or the pop-up sign up, Clavio will be able to know if this user has basically, you know, is basically linked with an email address within your um, database. Now, they will be able to track what products this person is looking at, when they're looking at them, and then they will proceed to send an automated flow based on what they've been looking at on your website, hence the name Browse Abandonment. It is an email flow sent to people who are just simply browsing on your website, not taking any action other than that. But you can see even just with this flow, again, an extra $3,000 in revenue in the last 30 days. The revenue per recipient isn't gonna be as good as the two above them, simply because there's no action related to placing an order within this flow. Obviously, abandoned cart is very self-explanatory. People, it is sent to people who are about to order that didn't. A welcome series, again, there's no sort of discount code or you know first order discount related to the browse abandonment. It simply is sent to people who have browsed on your website on a specific day, they'll then get sent an email or two over the coming days. Customer thank you, again, very important, but very self-explanatory. An email flow sent to customers after they've placed an order. A good opportunity to offer upsells, cross-sells, perhaps a second purchase discount and things like that. This, this is a custom one I actually made myself, um, you can see, in 2023. This is what I call a post-shipment reassurance. Now, a lot of my items are bulky. A lot of them are very heavy. They're very large. They take a little bit longer to deliver than perhaps what a customer is used to on Amazon, for example. They might be used to two, three-day delivery. Some of my products take six or seven days because of the size and weight of them. So to essentially reassure my customers that their orders are in transit, I send them what is called a post-shipment reassurance email. After a few days of their order being dispatched, they'll get an automated email just reassuring them that their order's on the way, attaching their tracking number, and just adding a few extra details in the email, such as you know our contact information in case the customer needs to speak to us about something. But I also use this as a another, you know, pretty much um, chance to again upsell the customer you can see a thousand one thousand two hundred dollars of extra revenue from email from an email that is essentially just there to sort of tell the customer your order's on the way it'll be with you in a few days time but again just by having a couple of upsells at the bottom of the email i've generated an extra twelve hundred dollars in the last 30 days now the final flow and i'm just switching to a broader um date range here for this one is going to be the customer win back flow now this isn't, again, going to be a flow that's going to be game-changing. It's worth having. You can see I've done Q4 of last year, so I can probably expect similar results once Q4 is finished this year. But you can see extra $800 in sales. Again, nothing crazy. The revenue per recipient really isn't that great. But at the end of the day, it's an extra $800 in revenue that I otherwise wouldn't have had. It's extra profit. It's, again, no additional marketing expense it's essentially free sales at the end of the day. Now, customer win back, very simple. It is an email, uh, two emails, I believe, in this flow that are sent to customers 90 days after they've placed their initial order. This again, a great example. If you sell a consumable product, for example, you might sell, um, you might send them an email for them to come back and perhaps replenish, order something uh, similar or the exact same product again. I don't sell consumable products, so I use this as an opportunity to cross-sell, upsell similar items or perhaps um, gift-related items that perhaps people might like to gift to family members. Um, essentially products that are very similar to what they've ordered. And you can see it's just another little bonus. Once it's set up, you pretty much set it and leave it. And it's just another nice way to get a good amount of extra revenue. And very quickly, the last thing on flows whilst we're here, you can see Q4 last year, 225K, almost a quarter of a million dollars in sales from that almighty welcome flow email. If that doesn't show you how important it is, I don't know what else will. Now, if we quickly jump over here to the uh, campaign section, like I said and showed you at the start, it's not a section that 
is gonna perform as well as flows. It might do for your business, but you can see there's quite a discrepancy, or should I say a difference between flows and campaigns, but you can even still see here how powerful these can be, especially times of year like Black Friday. Now, again, I'm gonna use Q4 last year as an example, as it was the busiest time of year. I'm obviously gonna blur the names and um, email list names of who I sent the emails to, but if we just go to, um, I don't know why this is not showing as Q4 last year, perhaps if we go to the back page here. Um, yes, perfect, okay, we're into November of 2023. These are the figures here, and they're the single figures from a single campaign sent to customers. Now, open rates, 46, 44%, 50%. These are very, very high open rates for emails. I've seen client accounts, perhaps, that have got a 10, 15%, and maybe a sale or two. There really is a trick with campaigns, and you need to essentially do them correctly to make the most of them. Now, you can see multiple campaigns here averaging $5,000 of sales from a single email sent out on a day, you know, and some of them peaking here at nine and a half thousand, nearly $10,000 of sales from one single email. It's just, it really is insane. Now, I'm gonna show you here a couple of examples of what a good email campaign email essentially looks like. In fact, a good place to start is probably an example of an email that perhaps wouldn't have performed very well. And it's a good opportunity for me to show you what I would do differently. Now, this is from my own personal email inbox. Um, I'm subscribed to Scottsdale Golf. They're a UK um, golf retailer. Um, obviously, I play golf, so that's why I'm subscribed to them. But they sent out. They sent this out on Tuesday, so uh, yesterday actually. Um, a 50% off now. The subject line is quite enticing. Black November, up to 50% off Boss. Obviously, Hugo Boss golfing attire. Now, that's quite a good headline because you've got the brand in there that people know. You've got a very, very good offer of 50% off. However, when you open the email, it's too, it's almost too simple. There's not a lot going on. To improve this, I would perhaps have six or eight products, you know, two by two, of the Hugo Boss products with their discounted prices because at least people can then see exactly what is discounted. They'll be able to look at a few products in one go and then they can then click directly to a product to place the order rather than, I assume if I click this link, it will just take me to the collection page, which again is useful. But if you're showing some of these products inside of the email campaign, it will 100% convert better. So this really isn't a great example. It's a good headline, but once you open the email, I bet this would have converted a lot better if they had listed a few products down here. And moving on to one of their other emails, this is essentially the layout I would have used for the Black Friday one we just looked at. You can see here that they have a main image here. So let's pretend this is the Black Friday one. They've got the Hugo Boss 50% off graphic here. I would have then put a ton of Hugo Boss products you can see very simple it's not that attractive but you're showing a lot of products i would perhaps include the uh if we just zoom in a little bit here you can add the discounted product price above the shop now button and that is essentially what i would describe as a very good looking email campaign perhaps you can include some customer reviews in here as well um my brands for example i always include my trust pilot score down at the bottom of an email campaign um, just to reinforce that trust and show you know a good reliable source of social proof for my brands so I thought that would be useful to show you a good example of an email campaign and essentially how I would structure the email itself in terms of headlines it's very you know it's always good to include um, a discount if you're offering a discount some sort of urgency in the headline as well always helps with open rates other ideas are going to be birthday flows or email campaigns perhaps you ask your customers for their date of birth you can set up a birthday flow to give people uh, a discount on their birthdays a again an example here you can see um, I received this email from Gymshark and they gave me 15% off on my birthday and I believe I actually used this discount code myself to, to make an order. So it clearly works. And that's another good example there. To finish this off, I just want to give one more example for email. I don't want to drag this out too long because I've been recording for about 25 minutes. But uh, another very good example I see, and I see many people do this, and it works really well. And that is going to be the VIP sort of early access um, strategy when it comes to email. So once you build your email list, and let's say you're planning to launch a new product, 
you could send out a series of emails to your list and essentially market a new product that isn't out yet. You can direct these people to a separate sign up page to get early access or should I say first access to a product launch and perhaps a VIP discount along with that too. Making people feel special when people have sort of a VIP and early access to something. Again, it converts really well because they feel special. It's an emotional connection and you know, you can do this for a month or six weeks or two months, really hype up a product drop and build that sort of email list up for this VIP uh, product drop. And when the day comes, you send out a bunch of emails to those who have signed up for the VIP waiting list and you will be shocked at the amount of people that convert. It will be insanely high. So perhaps if you've got some new product in your pipeline that you're looking to launch soon, just try this with one of them once you've uh, got your email um, account set up. It, it's really worth a try and it's just another good method to make the most out of email marketing. I hope you found this video useful, something slightly different from Google and Facebook, but it all goes into the one package of how to build a successful brand. That really is what I try and focus on when I speak to clients and people I mentor. It's so much more than building a dropshipping store, guys. Um, I can't stress it enough and I hope this video really sort of proves the point of how important email marketing is even in 2024. If you're interested in working with me, make sure you drop me a DM on Instagram. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.